Good morning, and welcome to the second Sunday in Epiphany. Please be seated. I am grateful for the opportunity to preach this morning. However, this is not where I thought I would be or what I imagined I would be doing today. Siri must have intuited that the gospel for today was a good fit for my current condition. For me, Epiphany is usually a favorite time in the church calendar. However, last week, I nearly lost track of that light. Like Nathaniel, I have looked to the trees to steady myself. I found myself underneath my own version of the fig tree, considering how best to understand a terrible turn of events and a personal upheaval. Today, I was supposed to be in Oceanside, California, preparing to attend a nephew's wedding. As someone who gets away from my role as primary caregiver for my husband, not very often, I was pretty excited about this trip. I had prepared extensively. Yes, I'm an Enneagram One, a little OCD about these things. I had all the details of Bob's care well documented, instructions on household tasks laid out. I was excited to represent Bob at the wedding of his youngest brother's younger son, to be with his family, with Danny and Ashley, and their friends and family. It felt like this was gonna be an adventure of love and joy. I got a great haircut, I bought new clothes, and most especially, I had this jade necklace Bob had given to me years ago, restrung. It was to be my personal jewel in the crown, if you will. Well, like so many oversized expectations, it fell apart and I was about to fall apart. I was bereft. So my exceptionally generous sister-in-law, Carla, who, along with my brother, was to care for Bob while I was gone, fell on some ice and fractured her leg. I cried quite a bit over her injury, how much pain that was about, as well as my loss of a perfectly planned adventure. I was trying to pull myself together. I began asking how I might be a grown-up in a situation where I really wanted to just rail and pout. Could anything good come out of Otis Avenue in St. Paul? <laughs> in this part of John's Gospel, we are told the story of the calling of the disciples. Among them, Andrew, Peter, and Philip. It is Philip who jars Nathaniel loose from meditation under the fig tree and tells him that they, the disciples, have found the Messiah. John the Baptist's prediction has come through. Philip is the grown-up who brushes aside Nathaniel's snide remark about nothing good can come out of Nazareth. He kindly challenges Nathaniel's rather narrow view of things. And he prepares him for Jesus, not simply coming out of Nazareth, but being fully present to Nathaniel. The epiphany in this story is that Jesus does not see Nathaniel as a naysayer, but rather as a man without deceit a man with a real and true self. Jesus speaks to that true and real self. In the bright light of Epiphany, Jesus has seen Nathaniel's promise and potential to rise above his morose condition. Jesus invites him to take the high road with him and for him. And what about that fig tree, which shows up so many times in scripture? It's sometimes barren, it sometimes bears fruit, 
It clothed Adam and Eve. It has been cherished. It has been cursed. In this gospel lesson, it's simply a tree that Nathaniel is standing under to brood or pray. He was waiting and preparing for what? Did not exactly know, did he? I turn to the trees when I am seeking solace and clarity. This is a practice that my brother inspired in me. I contemplate on trees in my neighborhood and along the river where I walk my dog, and I find trees to be immensely helpful, especially when I'm troubled. I can be comforted when I see the sun begin to rise or the moon to settle behind the barren branches of the trees in winter. So the morning after learning I would not be traveling as I hoped, I consulted the trees at dawn from a small window in a second floor bathroom of our home. And before I faced the day, I found myself, if not at peace, at least open to possibilities beyond my disappointment. And I started shedding my pain. And somehow, Jesus graciously accepted that pain and held it. Jesus was telling me to get over my sulk and follow a different path. Later that same morning, I attended a staff meeting here at St. Mark's, where, as usual, we did gospel-based discipleship with today's gospel. We read both the NRSV version and the message. And I was drawn not only to Nathaniel, Philip, Jesus, and the fig tree, but to the ascending and the descending of the angels. Those angels glowingly climbing up and down the ladders that connect heaven and earth. What a beautiful image that is. It reflects to me how God expresses a constant loving relationship with us, a relationship that's dynamic and animated. All these instant messages to us, around us, upon us, within us. We are filled with God's grace, even when we're not paying close attention. Angels populate Christmas and Epiphany in communicating with Mary and Joseph, announcing the birth of Christ, beckoning the shepherds, guiding the wise men, warning Mary and Joseph to flee to Egypt. In my own understanding of the angels, I see the work of the Holy Spirit. That morning, <clears throat> as we shared our reflections on the reading, the ascending and descending of the angels seemed to capture our imagination. This idea of angels coming and going, being with us and then not being with us. And then my colleague, my good colleague, John Satterberg, offered a particularly important observation. He pointed out that the NRSCV version of the gospel, reading the angels, they are ascending first ascending and then descending. In the message, on the other hand, the angels are first descending and then ascending. Meaning, John said, that the angels are already here. The angels begin here. They begin with us. For me, that small distinction means a great deal. It says to me that God's communication with us is always available, right here, right now, if only we listen and pay attention. As we pay attention, we can be like Nathaniel under the tree. I can be Helen looking out the window at the trees and watching with her heart as heaven opens and God guides and reforms her for what is here in the present moment. Loss and disappointment are part of life. Finding the epiphanies with disappointment and loss is a challenge. 
It is a challenge we are called to over and over again. And we have no better advisor than Jesus, who, as he did with Nathaniel, finds the best in us and nurtures and celebrates it. Through Jesus, we are saved from ourselves, from our self-pity, our self-regard, and our blindness who, who we really are in his eyes. Thanks be to that kind Jesus for bringing us the light of the epiphany. Amen. Amen.